I imagine you can imagine what this does to mental health problems. Uh, a report was a recent report was called "Stress and Coping Under Siege." It was uh, actually authored by Ahmed Abu Tawahina, who's with us. Uh, Ahmed, can you? You're the director general of the Gaza Community he Mental Health Program. What does all this do to the population's mental well-being, mental health? Okay, uh, majority of Gazans used to describe Gaza Strip as a big prison. That has been a few years ago. Today, Gaza Strip would be described as a ghetto or even a cage. And the language used by the mental health professionals nowadays in Gaza Strip based on clinical practices mm. is reminding them of the pioneering uh, experiments carried out by a pioneering psychologist where they tried to uh, uh, study the behavior of animals by putting them in cage and exposing them to different traumatic uh, 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 experiences in order to figure out how these animals are going to cope with the ongoing trauma. <clears throat> and all these could be used to describe the exact situation in the Gaza Strip. Because I would like to differentiate between two perspectives in tackling the situation in Gaza. First perspective is, could be tackled from a per, I mean perceptual uh, uh, approach. And the second one could be from emotional approach. As a Palestinian, as Gaza, living in Gaza, uh, I have been born in Gaza, I have been uh, uh, working in Gaza since my graduation, providing mental health services for uh, psychiatric patients. My reaction would be quite different from all those studies and analysis for the situation in Gaza. Life in Gaza could be described from four different deeds. It's despair, depression, dependency, and division. The new phenomena in Gaza Strip could reflect and giving the right interpretation of the impact of what's going on on the psychological well-being of the entire population in the Gaza Strip. For example, one of the important outcomes of the study you just uh, mentioned is about suicidal thoughts and suicidal attempts. You know, culturally speaking, suicide is never being part of our culture. Meanwhile, around 3% of the entire population in the Gaza Strip, especially youth, have suicidal thoughts. If you take into consideration the number who managed to commit suicide by burning up themselves due to poverty and unemployment, you couldn't imagine that. And I'll give you a very short example of this. My example is from my clinical experience. An unemployed father at the age of 42, he is the only breadwinner for his family, having a big family of uh, nine children plus his wife and himself, one of his little kids keeps asking him every morning for one shekel. You know, the shekel is Israeli currency that we use still in Gaza. And the father's immediate answer used to be, sorry, I couldn't afford you one shekel a day. This is a, a huge amount of money for the father. And then one day the little child said to his father, since you couldn't afford me one shekel a day, why you have brought me to this life? And that was, that, that, that was the real trauma, if we could use, I mean, trauma itself wouldn't be the right terminology to be used in order to reflect the exact situation in the Gaza Strip. But in order to be at the same level of using the same terminology, that would be the real trauma for the father who tried to commit suicide twice. Okay. Uh, by the end, he was referred, he was referred by the Shifa Hospital to Gaza Community Mental Health Program for treatment. And would and you say, so forgive me, Ahmed, would you say that the primary reason for these conditions is the occupation, the overcrowding, the poverty? 
or a combination of all three? Or is there a primary reason that's driving these mental health issues uh, to these extremes? Definitely, the Israeli occupation is the main dilemma, historically speaking, in our life as Palestinians. And it goes into circuit. The occupation has changed Gaza Strip into a gate right now. The occupation has imposed restriction of movements, not only of the Palestinian labels, but also in Palestinian patients who are dying in their influences, waiting at the cheap point to get access to their hospitals outside Gaza Strip. If we take this in consideration, we have to find out how the occupation has prevented hundreds of thousands of Palestinian laborers of uh, getting approach to their work in Israel, mm. where has been resulted in a huge poverty in the Gaza Strip. Mm. Okay, let's turn to the UK and see whether anything uh, can be done or anything is being done. 